again, one of the things I want to be able to do is um, with InfoWorks, you can go anywhere in the, basically the world and grab row data, topo data, and also building data. So one of the things that I've kind of went in and did to save time was I've created a model. So if I go into model builder, basically what this allows me to do is create a concept and proposal of any civil infrastructure project that I may want to kind of create to try to get approval for. Again, I can zoom anywhere basically in the world and grab data. So I can define the area up to 200 square kilometers of the model that I want to build. Within that model, we're going to get road data from OpenStreetMaps, highway and rail, building data from OpenStreetMaps, and then aerial imagery from Bing Maps, and then also elevation data from USGS in terms of 10 meter. And you can also bring in your own survey data if you wanted to. So I have created a model. So something really simple. I've created this model in Arkansas, Fayetteville, Arkansas. So it opens up a model. And as you can see, I have a large amount of models, as you can see, um, Hoover Dam, Hartsville Atlanta Airport, and then some other different road designs. So again, here's the model that's been built. We clearly can see that there is aerial photography. We clearly can see that there is topo data. From this topo data, we also see that we have roads. If I hold my cursor, it's showing me my West Barton Boulevard. So from OpenStreetMap, so the data has been brought in. And typically, um, for a site of this, this magnitude, I'm talking maybe nine minutes to build this model once you send it up. So I'm going to turn this model north and just to bring in a few things. So um, one of the things that I want to make reference, because we're talking about connected workflows. And again, ultimately, we want to be able to pull this data, which is from a concept, into Civil 3D. And here you can clearly see that there's some kind of roundabout and roads that they were trying to propose at some point. And one of the things I want to be able to do is kind of put a boulevard in there to kind of address that. So <clears throat> the first thing, if I go to my one tool, I'm going to select this data sources. With the data sources, I have the ability to bring in different file formats. So whether it's a 3D model, a civil 3D drawing, an AutoCAD drawing, a 2D overlay as an AutoCAD drawing, an Autodesk IMX file, an Autodesk Revit file, City GML, a DGN model from MicroStation, an IFC model, Land XML. Clearly, Land XML comes from a variety of external metafile language file formats that you can pull in. A point cloud, a raster, an SDF spatial data format a shape file from Esri, or a SQLite database, and last but not least, a SketchUp model. So as an example, um, all I want to be able to do is um, down here at the bottom, because I've done a few things to kind of address for time, we have this area. So what I want to bring in is I want to bring in this LAN XML file, just to kind of give you a feel for um, the tools that you can pull in. So um, I'll bring in this pipes. So I'll just drag in and drop it right into my screen. It's a land XML file. It's telling me what the source is. It's giving me a coordinate system, which the coordinate system from InfoWorks comes from longitude latitude, LL84. And you can put your own coordinate system in here if you wanted to. So from that, if I select close and refresh, it shows me a pipes that's generating over here. So from that, if I just move my cursor up, you can see that it's brought in those pipes. Now, where did I get those pipes from? Well, you can get those pipes from Civil 3D. You can get those pipes from Esri GIS. There's a lot of different places you can get a pipe network from. But clearly, Civil 3D, Hydroflow, 
storm and sanitary analysis and river analysis plays a role in terms of bringing in this data. So, and one of the beauties of working with InfoWorks is I can go in and kind of, you know, create different proposals. So I'm just going to call this prelim because so I brought those pipes in. And then also I want to bring in <clears throat> some ponds. So I put in two ponds over here. So I just want to bring in two ponds. So I've created these ponds from Civil 3D. And just to get a feel for what your data from Civil 3D looks like in InfoWorks. So here's my pond file. If I just pick on it, I can just drag and drop it right into the screen. And you will notice that it is a land, in, land XML file with a coordinate system tied to it already. And just keep an eye on this area right here when I select close and refresh. That surface model from Civil 3D, which is a pond, now has been integrated into my actual surface model from InfoWorks. So again, you can bring in your own surface data. So I've got kind of two tier pond there with an overspill going in, which is fine. And then I got, if we look at it, there's different views that I can create. So I'm on this conceptual view. If I select this pipes view, I can kind of display my um, model differently. So. I mean, as an engineer, maybe you don't want to see all that sky and data information. You want to see triangles and data. So here's that pipe network coming in and dumping into this pond. So something pretty straightforward. And I'll just come right back and change to my conceptual view. And I'm right back where I started. So a little bit of flexibility. So one of the things we also want to take a look at is at some point, we're trying to get this data from InfoWorks into Civil 3D. Um, the raw data that comes in, clearly you can see that these are splines. So it's just a spline in terms of raw data. But you can easily convert this to a design role. And within a design role, now I'm starting to make reference to ASTO standards. So all my design roads that I will lay out will be based upon ASTO standards. The beauty of working with design roads is now you have the ability to come in and specify what type of vehicle that you want to go through this intersection. So again, we have to think about what this brings to the table in terms of us in a realistic site. So for swept path analysis and things like that, because if I said I needed a, um, WB62 truck to go through that intersection, it's going to relay out my curve radiuses based upon that intersection. And I'll just come back and put maybe a SU30 truck, which is more specifically used in the specific um, commercial sites to bring in for delivery. And then we also can take a look at the idea of creating a roundabout. So it's saying, you know, I don't have enough geometry for the space where I'm roundabout for the arms and radii, which is perfect because now I don't have to waste a lot of time trying to figure out whether that will work. So we'll go back to that intersection. So something straightforward. And then <clears throat> what I want to be able to do is because also within that AEC collection, we do have raster design. And one of the things I want to do with raster design is be able to pull in a TIFF or a PDF and pull it into this site. Because sometimes, you know, we create a concept plan with a PDF in terms of a proposal of what we want it to look like. And we'll show how we can utilize that within InfraWorks. So, <clears throat> I did make reference to Revit, SketchUp, and 3D models. So what I want to be able to do here, right here as a quick example, because I think we have some room out here. Um, I'm going to bring in this model 
And if we take a look at the model, we can take a look at the model in 3D. So this model is of Minute Maid Park. So here's my model. And this is a SketchUp file. And I also have the ability to bring in a, a FBX file from 3ds max so i'll go ahead from this and i'll say i just want to interactively place this model so it just drops right there on my cursor and from this i'm just going to double pick on it and select an actual model so i'm going to say this is going to be my building and i'm going to select close and refresh And it says estimated time. And again, we have to consider, you know, the time that we're bringing these in. So we'll go ahead and close this real quick. So there's my model. So pretty straightforward. And kind of look at the detail that we have here for this model. I mean, you have to think about what we're actually trying to get out of the model which is going to be some visualization, maybe some animation. And there's my model. So, I mean, how do we look with that? Um, so maybe we want to create some kind of parking lot in reference to, so we can do a coverage area. So from this coverage area, we can just say, uh, if I scroll down, we'll just say, we'll just pick a little area and we'll say, we'll just come from here. And we'll come up to here, no big deal. And we'll come out to here. And we'll just kind of go along here. And we will go and double pick right there. And there's my coverage area. So it only takes a couple seconds to kind of get across an idea of what we want to create. So now we can kind of throw some parking spaces and things like that in terms of what we want to be able to create. So I'm going to do some really quick things in terms of models that I'm building. And for all intents and purposes, I want to create a land area. So I want to create a land area that covers this basin right here. So something really quick <clears throat> in terms of a land area. I'm going to pick on it. And I'm going to pick from here. I'm just going to kind of get in between, pick here and here, just to kind of get it out of the way. So it shows me my square footage. Because we talked about quantities and things like that. And if I go to my style palette, within my style palette, we have a grading feature. So within that grading feature, now I can just come and just drag this right on here and say, okay, I want this to be graded three to one. And now you can see that now that has been graded in three to one. And if I pick on my analysis tab, I can say, I just want to do some terrain statistics real quick. So some, some really quick stuff. And then we're going to move on, double pick. And it gives me my cut and fill volume for my 2D and 3D area. OK, so some really quick stuff. And we'll move this palette out of the way. And we're just moving things around a little bit. Um, we talked about also being able to pull in a SketchUp model or an FBX. So if I double pick on that, I'm just going to configure it really quick. So I'm going to go to building um, 3D model. And then I'm going to select to interactively place. And just as a quick example, I'm just going to double pick right there just to pull it in, select close and refresh. So some really simple stuff. OK, so again, whether it's a large scale or a small scale, I can bring in an actual model depending on uh, whether it's a microstation a Revit model, a DGN, 3D model, or a shape or a raster, or even a SketchUp file.